Let me get this thing on the road. Wake up from your turkey coma. It's the thing revival. People say the first thing you need when doing a car revival is a plan. Step one, get yourself a pair of new rims and tires. What about safety, you ask? I know, the rotted floor pan, it's gen side, it doesn't matter. So I'm in a great mood, guys. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, I get to go to my mom's, visit with family. Stepdad Steve cooks an absolute feast I'll have left over for years. Also, we're gonna open this at the end of the video. Sunday, I'm gonna be going with Musty One on an adventure with him. And just kind of inviting myself that you would do the same, right? Yeah. So let's get into this thing, valves. We're gonna go to the fuel system. We need to get this thing running and driving. What was the other issue? Oh, there was something in the shroud. We gotta figure out what that is. I did get the BRMs. I did get some more parts from Chris. Thank you again, Chris, for hooking me up. So, let's get it up. And a huge thank you to Dubworks for this awesome tripod he got me for my birthday. So real quick, we're pointing to number one. We'll get that side valve cover off. Make sure we're on top dead center. Get this. Trailer thingamajiggy out of here. Try and do this without pulling it off the lift. Oh, that was easy. Must be these new cars. What do you think? Clean? Not so clean? Tap tap a -roo. Get the hammer! You know when you order that three piece dead blow kit and this is what they send you on eBay? Yep. We're gonna need a bigger hammer. Why don't you use a screwdriver? I don't like prying on things with screwdrivers. I'm pretty happy with that. Certainly seen worse on this channel. All right, what are we looking for? I, I think I almost forgot how to even do this. So this is one. So I'm gonna have to lower it down, maybe to rotate. Now I get my ladder. So we're looking for no movement. Oh, I can see, all right. No movement on number one. We're good. What do you think? All the better, they're loose. Not terrible. I'm gonna leave those for now. Counterclockwise, counterclockwise. It's been a while since I've done valves. All right, so 90 degrees counter to number two. This one feels pretty loose. Eh, you know what? I'm just gonna, I could tighten them up a little bit. I'm just gonna leave them. So that's a good start. Let's see how number three and four look. Went too far. Comes quick. There you go, Einstein. All right. Trying to go 180, not 90. Well, that was a good start. Hopefully, three and four are good. That gas gets cooked. Pretty tight, very tight. Good old number three strikes again. That's why you gotta check your valves. That's super tight. No movement. Exhaust. All right, we'll get that one adjusted up. 
I know, this is super boring. See that dub work? She didn't want me to check the valves. I shouldn't even run this thing. That's why I always check the valves. It's super tight. Yep. That's freaking tight. So I'll rotate it 90 degrees, and we'll do four. I'll button this up, Let's, and we'll bring you back. You want to see four? We'll show you four real quick. Doesn't feel bad. It's good. Let's throw a new set of vintage gaskets on there. All right, well, that wraps it up. Valve adjustment. So last video we tried to run an auxiliary fuel tank to the fuel pump and the fuel pump was inoperable. So today we'll change the fuel pump and bring us one step closer to our first drive. That is on there. You guys are in the way. Excuse me. There we go. So I'm gonna pull a dizzy just to make it a little easier to get at these bolts. Sucker's really on there, huh? Oh, of course, now the clamp. Of course, the clamp wants to come off now. <laughs> so I'll be getting rid of the Chinesium distributor. Going with the Sparks Works. Get a hold of Bill and have him get one out to me for this. So for you guys that don't know, I don't know much about these new cars, but we got a alternator instead of the original generator so you're going to want to order the correct um, fuel pump because if it was a generator it would be more straight up and down versus not tilted to clear the alternator so there are some differences still an original vw stamp on this one Sparksworks also sells fuel pumps. I don't know if he does the newer style like this because I get the older ones from him. Check out Bill's stuff at Sparksworks. I'll put a link in the description. Oh, you don't want to clear the carburetor, really? These new cars. This is a 30 pick one, you know, we'd have no problem with. Really? I gotta take that stud out? Looks like it. Oh, hogwash. That's got to come out of there. That's going to be fun to put in, huh? Also, make sure you get the right gasket. They have two gaskets. This gasket goes on the top. Uh, we've got a little lip right here. I'm going to try to just pop that up. It's not a flat surface, otherwise I wouldn't pry on it. Yep. That's why I don't pry on stuff. Let's go ahead and check, make sure this is the, f the right rod for the uh, alternator fuel pump. I'm sure it is, but let's double check. I'm pretty sure these are a hundred millimeters, which is just under four inches. And it is 10, 10 centimeters. There you go. So that's the correct one for the alternator. 
quick peek at the original one here. They do have fuel filters. So just remember gas goes um, from the tank in the top. That's the bottom. Into the top and then out the bottom. But just look at this. Uh, look at this. Mm. I was going to take this out because I want to check the condition of it on the bottom. But it's sealed on there pretty good. I'm going to say it's good. I'm just going to roll it. I can revisit this later. I know, I'll do it now, but I don't feel like breaking it right now. So we're looking for four millimeters. That looks good. Again, this is just to get this thing running and driving in and out of the shop on its own power so Dubworks can get his panel van out and about and have access to the shop. So I like to get everything just running and driving in here so we're not pushing cars around. Again, make sure if you have an alternator, you get the correct fuel pump. Make sure you make it dust off 2020. I have no idea why that's in there. I was there though. Bottom, top. One other thing, I've seen cars at shows that don't have the clip on there. That's not good when that pin falls out. So I'm gonna go ahead and grease this up. I'm probably not in the shot. Put some good goobies in there. We'll get our new gasket on there and get this installed. Can put a little gasket sealer on there, but I have such good faith in in this gasket. We're gonna go with it. I really don't. I wish I had some, and I don't. What kind of shop is this? Will it fit? Oh, they designed this one much better. Oh, I just jinxed myself. Oh, thank you, Brazil. Nice work. We'll get this snugged up and I have to go get gas. We'll see if this actually works. Put our dizzy back in, fire it up. Get our diz clamp back in. I don't like the looks of that. So we got our baby moon, half moon, quarter moon, third moon, whatever the hell you want to call it, moon. All right, that's down. How bad did I move the timing? Eh, not terribly bad. Condenser wire. Don't forget that for your Spakarovsky. Yeah, I should have hooked the fuel line up before I put that in, huh? Oh well. It's 6 30, it feels like it's 11 30. It's a love winter. Point at number one. Timing looks good. It's gonna run. It's gonna run. But first, gotta see. How these BRMs look. Again, I'm not running these. These are just to how much you want to go in. Probably gonna go with something like musty one. He's got the off-road. I like the off-road look kind of thing. What's happening here? These don't have 14, what are these? Are these 12s? What are these things? Oh, they got the little baby lug nuts. 
Oh, that's cute. I, I thought these had like, as I cross thread that, I mean, I thought these had uh, 14 mils now. Got the little 12 millimeter stubby babies. I do have some of those though. Why bother, dude? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It helps with the vision. Who shows up with one lug nut? Where are they? Oh yeah, see it looks better already. You guys are digging that, some of you. Some of you are like, oh my god. Those are the most played out rims ever. Yeah, well, I don't have a car with BRMs. Gotta have at least one. And these are 205, yeah, 205.70s all the way around, so. I'm not gonna run these on a bug all the way around. Out back, yeah. Let me step back. <laughs> That look, not so much. Like I said, I'm not running these. I just want to see it with some fresh rubber, fresh rims. Help the vision. So $700, what do we got into this thing? Paid $1,500. Chris hooked me up with a roll bar and something else for $500. Thank you again, Chris. Uh, that's it. So we got $500, $700. That's 12, what's that, 2,700? 2,700. Hey, that'll work. I mean, four of those, that won't look terrible. There's that word again, musty one. Not terrible. Can't really get a good perspective, but that looks better than that. Right? Right. Try not to pour this all over the distributor. We'll fill the bowl and give it one small shot. Right on the dizzy. Hopefully, it takes the fuel. All right, let's see what it does. Is that battery charged? Probably not. Then no jump pack. Let's see what happens. Yep, messed up the timing for sure. Should have never touched the timing. These new cars, I just don't know how to time them. Five degrees after? What's this after business? All right, and I was jamming some bad motor scooter here. That's right, Sammy. All right, let's see it. Let's get this bad thing to run. All right, it's a good start. The runner, we know that already, Einstein. Sammy, you were good luck. Let's try you again, a little Montros. All right, let's have it.
smooth. It sounds smooth. Definitely, it's in that fan. I can feel it. So let's take that. Uh, let's take the belt off. But man, when I revved it, it's, it sounded really good. Looks like it's taking the fuel, which is good. Really. Fire this guy up. Here we go. Man, that thing sounds good for not have have run. There it is. It's in the fan. It's that fan. Something something is in there. So there you have it. Apparently my fuel pump install worked. Yep, fuel levels down. It's taking the fuel. And man, that thing sounds good. So whew, happy with that. I think sounds good. Alright. Let's, uh, now what? Fuel system. Actually, I got a new belt for this while I was at it, but. Now we can uh, get in and out of the garage. I feel like, let's uh, see if the clutch, let's see, hopefully the clutch, I don't, it hasn't, I don't think it's been sitting long enough for the clutch to be stuck. I'm telling you, I must have failed in preschool for its shapes and sizes, there we go. Oh, there, there's your problem. All right, guys, well, the engine's had time to cool down. Let's see if this clutch works and if it goes through the gears, and then we'll shut it down. First, first drive. 76,000. Oh, let's go. Um, yeah, that's, that's one stiff clutch. Oh. I don't think the clutch is going to work. Wow. Yeah, that doesn't work. Scratch that. Oh, it's... We got a stuck... I don't want to... Well, we made some progress. We'll change that tranny fluid, fluid, tranny oil, gear oil. Let's get it up in the air and we'll try and take a look at what that clutch is doing. You guys might have seen it. I couldn't really see it, but that noise, hopefully that was just, it's rubbing on the lift. So hopefully that's what that was, that noise. Let's, uh, I'm going to pull that tire off and then we'll try it again. Well, the pedal assembly is completely frozen. Throttle cable 
is absolutely frozen. We're getting our clutch cable to move with the pedal stuck, so I've been shooting lube in the clutch tube underneath. Yeah, I can't even move the uh, clutch pet or uh, gas pedal. Can't even, can't even move it. Coming back. Nice. I'm gonna have to really lube that throttle though, man. Oof. Let's fire it up one more time. I just want to uh, make sure that noise was that uh, tire rubbing on the lift, which I'm pretty sure it was. chirp them <laughs> nice well guys that's gonna wrap it up for this one I thought we had enough time to get into the fuel tank and the fuel system drop this thing on the ground get it out the door I had a couple people stop by today so it was a little short on time and I gotta get ready for some musty one action yeah pretty stoked about that and it's not the 15 window in that press bumper bus in New Hampshire something totally different and you're gonna want to check that out it'll be on his channel I'm sure I'll shoot a little bit of footage bring a little musty one action of course so look for that and then this came in the mail I've been waiting the company in California reached out to me check that out my new coffee cup for the morning what else we got in here? Oh, there it is. Glad I washed my hands. It's white. Oh, he's got all kinds of stickers too. That's it. Bird's Surf Shed, baby. San Diego, California. Thank you, Bird. Freaking pumped about this. Oh, I got stuff on it already, jeez. Jen was actually born in San Diego, huh? Bird Surf Shed. Check that place out, man. Got some cool stickers in here. Bird Surf Shed. Might even have a little banner. We got a little poster. Let's see what this is. Got kind of, kind of crushed up here, Birdie. Yeah, this is his place. This is awesome. Got kind of banged up. But look at all those boards. I forget what kind of long board we got over there. Which brings me... Thank you again, Bird. I appreciate it. I will rock that. And I will be sipping my coffee on that cool coffee cup. Thank you. So, just a quick story. 1987 family we go to Waikiki Hawaii and I decide I'm 15 on top of the world right I'm gonna go surfing never surfed in my life right I gotta go surfing I've been looking at surfing magazines I'm in the VW's I gotta go surfing in Hawaii right so I ran a surfboard right we got the nice pointy tip with all the cool colors no leash and I try to head out there and go out there with the guys, right? So I'm trying to get out there, paddle out there. Here comes the wave. Up, knocks me over. Knocks me over. Up, knocks me over, right? Didn't know how to go.
go into the wave. Just whoop over, lose the board, right? No leash, there goes the board, gotta go get it. This went on for about a half hour. I was in pretty good shape, I could jog 20 miles like when I locked my keys in my car and jogged home. I was in pretty good cardio. I was getting tired because it took a while. Finally, I finally crested one and got out to where the locals were hanging out on their boards. So I finally get out there. I'm a little gassed, finally get out there. Total true story, this is honest to God truth, 100% true. I finally get out there, I'm a little winded. I'm like, okay, I'm with the locals, right? I just, they're just sitting on their boards, you know? They're just sitting there chilling. I'm like, all right, I gotta climb up on the board. I climb up on the board and I roll over. I fall off the board and I'm like, ah, oh, you know. So they're all looking at me like, who is this jack wagon, right? Looking at me, I get on the board. I'm like, all right, just chill, just chill, right? Just chill. So I'm sitting on the board. and It's really cool because you can see the waves grow out there. And finally, they drop down and they go. I'm like, zit, zit, drop down, paddle down. Here comes the wave, it's growing, growing, growing. Gets to that point where it's about ready to peak. I get up on the board. As soon as I stand up, I fall forward and I fall into the wave. I am now in the wave. I'm not going to go so far as call it the pipeline. I don't remember how big this wave was, but it was big enough. I'm in the wave and I look to my left. This guy's dropping in with the super pointy board and he's just right there. I look up to my left, there he is, he's dropping in. I put my hands up in front of my head because he's headed right for my head. And I duck down and I put my hands in front of my head and his fins go right over my hands. And then of course, the wave crashes and then there's the, you know, the, all of that and then I find myself washed up in the shallow and I'm just kind of like, you know, dazed and he came in to check on me. Hey, are you all right, man? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm all right. You know, and he's, you don't belong out here. You don't belong out there. I said, you're right. I don't belong out there. And I, I went in and brought the board back and took lessons with Manny who was missing his lower leg from the knee down. Now Manny put me on one of those huge long boards and I just remember him yelling at me to, you know, bend your knees, bend your knees. And I'm like, Manny, I'm on a 38 foot long board. Like I could probably do a handstand on this thing. So anyway, the only thing else I remember is other than the girl I was surfing with, where was I? Manny. And I remember him also telling you how you had to you know, fall backwards because I was jumping off the board and with the coral, you can slice your foot open. You slice your foot open, your feet are gonna bleed. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. That's why I don't surf anymore. Shocks in the water. All right guys, well thanks for listening to my long-winded story for the seven or eight of you that are still watching. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys that are always in the comments. There's a hundred or two hundred of you, maybe, you know, a hundred thousand subscribers and there's that core guys that are always there. You know who you are. I can't name all hundred, two hundred of you, but I try to respond to all of them. Thank you. I do appreciate it. I do love the comments and all the thumbs up that you guys do give. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you to Bird Surf Shop. Thank you guys for dropping in, checking out the Revival. Fuel system next. Drop this thing on the ground. See if the clutch really works. Musty one action this weekend. Head out with him to shoot a video, I'll shoot some footage for you guys. Thank you again, everyone. Make it a great week. Take care.